Our next eminent speaker is John Pontifex, who is the head of Press and Information at the Aid of Church in Need, a Catholic charity which supports persecuted and other suffering Christians. While ensuring the views of Christians are heard in Pakistan, John has not forgotten about the plight of Ahmadi Muslims and hence gave evidence at the last year's APPG inquiry into the persecution of Ahmadi Muslims and other minorities in Pakistan. It's a pleasure to have John at this Jalsa Salana, and I'd invite him to come and say a few words. Thank you very much indeed. It's a great honour to be with you all today. Aid to the Church in Need, the charity I was represent here today, is committed to the cause of religious freedom. The charity was founded in 1947 with the precise objective of reaching out to communities on opposite sides during the Second World War. Our founder, Father Varenfried, provided basic food provisions for families on the breadline displaced by the conflict. And that is how the charity drew its strength, building on the need to reach out to communities irrespective of their background with the need for peace and reconciliation at the heart of everything we do. As a charity, we are now at work in 140 countries around the world, providing emergency support and pastoral help for Christians persecuted and oppressed, and indeed support for other communities with whom we have such close ties. And always the same objective is there, to bring peace in place of conflict, understanding in place of bigotry, and hope in place of despair. It is a great privilege to work alongside the Ahmadi Muslim community, not least with their inquiry, uh, which was uh, mentioned just earlier, but also with the all-party parliamentary working group on international religious freedom or belief, which Aid to the Church in Need is a stakeholder, as indeed are the Ahmadi Muslim community here in the UK. And the need to stand up for religious freedom could not be more important than it is today. I have traveled to Syria four times every year for the last four years. And I remember one man describing how he was kidnapped and held at gunpoint. This man was a priest and the man holding the gun to his head was in fact a man whom that very priest had helped free from his captors only the week before. And it is proof that what will survive of us is love, because through that means this man's life was saved, the priest's life was saved, and the community survived. I've also visited Pakistan and worked in Karachi, in Hyderabad, in Faisalabad, and elsewhere. And I have become aware that it's not only Christians who suffer there. In fact, in many respects, the Ahmadi Muslim community suffers far worse than does the Christian community. And that's why we at Aid to the Church Need produce a report called the Religious Freedom in the World Report, which highlights persecution not just of Christians, but of many minorities, including Ahmadi Muslims. Earlier this last week, I was in touch with Cardinal Joseph Kutz, the Archbishop of Karachi in Pakistan, and he wrote and told me that there has been a growing intolerance in society, aggravated by the growth of militant groups. When we will have an attack, we do not know. It's anyone's guess. But then he went on and finished by saying, we unite all our sufferings with those who suffer more than us. In standing up for religious freedom, and I will finish on this point, in standing up for religious freedom, which we do as a Catholic charity, we do not imply that some groups are more entitled to such freedoms than others. It is not a covert means of seeking special treatment. Rather, we reach for a standard of respect and fairness for all. And in doing so, we especially reference those who suffer for the lack of it. 
So it is a huge, uh, very humbling moment for me to thank you on behalf of Aid to the Church Need, to thank you for your kindness, for your generosity, and for all that you're doing to bring that sense of peace and harmony in this country and everywhere where you are present. Thank you again.